Waitress becomes rich after a chance encounter with a homeless man who had no memories. Careful! A pair of powerful arms pushed Amanda off the road when she heard a loud cry. Sadly, she was so preoccupied with her thoughts that she began to cross the street while the signal was still green. Nevertheless, she was saved by a kind stranger who was standing nearby. After turning around, she turned to face the man. Amanda recognized him as the neighborhood homeless man because he seemed familiar. Even though he had never visited her restaurant, she had seen him strolling around while she was taking quick cigarette breaks. His beard was dusty and unkempt, and his clothes were in shambles. He also had sad-looking eyes. To repay his kindness, Amanda thought of calling the man over for a meal. Normally, she wouldn't act in such a way, but her kid was spending the night with a friend, and this man deserved a delicious, hot lunch, especially in light of his brave deeds. Surprisingly, the man declined Amanda's offer, but she didn't take no for an answer. Until he consented, she insisted and wouldn't let him leave. She showed him the way to her house after he finally gave in. When they got there, Amanda thought lunch wouldn't be enough. She walked into her room and collected some of her late father's clothing. They were dated but spotless and in fantastic shape. Consider taking a shower, you'll feel so much better after doing it. The bathroom has everything you could need, and here are some clothes, Amanda added, handing him the garments and nearly forcing him into the bathroom. Oh. Hold on a second. I don't even know your name. The man instantly looked at her with soulful eyes and said, My name is Paul. Thank you. Amanda gently smiled as he closed the bathroom and went to the kitchen to get dinner ready. She started to speak but stopped when she saw Paul. He was not as old as she initially believed, and he was as attractive as they came. He must have been in his forties. But why was he a homeless man? She called him to the kitchen table when dinner was done. She quizzed him about his life and how he got up on the streets while they were eating, hoping she wasn't being too cruel. Paul recalled how one day he just woke up in an alley with no memories and none of his possessions. Amanda was at a loss for words. She constantly had financial difficulties. It was difficult being a single mother, so she relied on the tips from the restaurant. But at least her house was perfect and had been fully paid for by her deceased parents. But the winter saw an increase in her electric bill every year. Amanda said that she had a plan and invited Paul to spend the night at her house as her kid had a sleepover that evening. It was sufficiently secure, and he could stay in her guest room. However, her strategy entailed checking through social media and missing person advertising. Additionally, they might be friendlier if she went to the police station and asked for assistance. Even though Paul accompanied her, going to the police didn't prove to be very helpful at all. Amanda then remembered that she had to stop at the restaurant on her way back. As soon as they arrived at the restaurant, Amanda headed to the back to meet with her boss. Despite being a no-nonsense supervisor, Mr. Perkins was kind. He didn't put up with laziness and demanded hard effort from everyone. But throughout the past two months that Amanda had worked there, he had been sufficiently tolerant, particularly in regards to her son. Then Amanda thought to ask Mr. Perkins where she could find a missing person ad. She then continued her story of how she met Paul, who had been homeless for almost four months. That's when Mr. Perkins' interest was piqued and he asked to meet the man. Since they didn't open the restaurant for several hours, there weren't any additional employees at the front desk because it was still early. Paul was seated near the front of the restaurant, where patrons typically waited for their tables if it was too busy to serve them right away. Mr. Perkins then recognized the man as Robert, the actual owner of that very restaurant. Paul's sister received the phone from Mr. Perkins and sobbed in his arms because she couldn't believe her brother had come back. They eventually began putting the events together once she confirmed that Robert Stewart's middle name was Paul. 
When Paul found out that he hailed from an incredibly wealthy family but had to work hard to open his business, he was stunned. He was extremely wealthy and resided in one of the area's most opulent buildings. He had been homeless for months, but no one could have imagined it from the way he appeared at the time. They were unable to explain how Paul found himself in an alley without his memory before the police collected his statement, which was the sole unsolved aspect of the tale. Four months later, they found CCTV footage from that evening. Paul's memory loss and lack of valuables were due to being dragged by two thieves and beaten to a pulp. After setting everything straight, Paul decided to start again in his life and began working at the restaurant. Surprisingly, he remembered every aspect of managing the company and adapted to his new post without any difficulty. Except that he now preferred the name Paul over Robert or Mr. Stewart, everything had returned to normal. He did, however, frequently pause to speak with Amanda. She never asked for anything in return, but they shared lunch during her breaks, and he gave her a raise in appreciation for saving him. Eventually, he made a date request, and she said yes. The three of them often went on family-friendly activities after Paul met her kid. He proposed to Amanda one day on the same road where they had met, and she said yes. Amanda never had to worry about money again because she had saved him without demanding anything in return, and Paul never asked her to sign a prenup.